Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 MCU movies. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. Today I'm going to be ranking my top 10 MCU films. Jim Mint over at Jim Mint Collectibles just did his video. Really liked that video at the end of it. He tagged me in it to deliver one of these videos on my own. And at the end of this video, I'm going to have to tag two more content creators to release their top 10 MCU movie video. And we'll do that at the end. But without further ado, let's get right into it. At number 10, I've got Captain America Civil War. I love this film. I think it's amazing, right? Not only is it kind of like an unofficial sequel to the Avengers, it's kind of like Avengers 2.5 and better than Avengers 2, which is Age of Ultron, in my personal opinion. But not only does it feature all these other characters like Iron Man and Black Widow and Vision and Scarlet Witch, it introduces the MCU to Spider-Man, to Black Panther, and very well done, if I might add, but at the same time, while it's juggling all of that around, at the core, it's about Steve Rogers. It's about, you know, him trying to save Bucky. It's about his disagreement with Tony. I really like this film. It does kind of work as an Avengers 2.5, but I'm cool with that. It's on my list. At number nine, I've got Avengers Endgame. I think that this is a really cool follow-up to the Infinity War, but it does drag a little bit. It gets a little bit long there, so I don't quite like it as much as Infinity War, which will be placed a little bit higher on this list. But all in all, a good wrap-up to the Infinity entire Infinity Saga. I love those moments towards the end where you see all the different MCU characters. This is a fanboy slash fangirl's dream. This was real fun stuff. It tried to go a little bit deep, sometimes too deep, at the detriment of the movie, kind of slowed up some of the pacing, and the time travel stuff seemed a bit weird and wonky, but it was still an enjoyable conclusion to like over 10 years of cinematic glory. At number eight, I'm going Black Panther. What is better than introducing Black Panther to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Captain America Civil War? Giving him his own movie, T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, R.I.P. Holy cow, to completely personifies and embodies that character. It was a stellar performance. Killmonger, an excellent villain. That is something I've criticized the MCU films over the years for, is having kind of weak villains. I think that the same thing is kind of continuing to plague us into Phase 4. But this is one of the best villains. Killmonger has a really interesting, complex story. There's a great dynamic there. But just building out this world of Wakanda, having that be realized, seeing that on cinematic screens, it was absolutely exciting and definitely worth being on the list. At number seven, I'm going Iron Man. This is the one that started it all back in 2008. This was Marvel gambling on itself. It's trying to make their own movies, right? They, If this movie tanked, Marvel would have just, it would have been crushed, right? Marvel Studios would have failed. This just, with the, or the, where the world we're living in right now would not have happened. John Favreau, Robert Downey Jr., and the rest of that cast have so much to do with that. This movie was a really great cinematic interpretation of the story of Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. I dare you to find me anybody more perfect to play the role than him. John Stamos, maybe at some point in his life, but not like Robert Downey Jr. did. It was an amazing cast. It was cool. Had a little bit of a weaker third act. That was something I think that's still going to plague the MCU films for a bit. But it was solid enough. Stain's a decent enough villain. But it really shines because Iron Man... And this was one of the first times that it was just such... An, an amazing rendition of the comic book on the screen from a Marvel movie. We hadn't really seen too much of that. Really changed the game. And we're living in the world now. For number six, I'm going Avengers, the very first one from 2012 by Joss Whedon. He was the director, but what an amazing job of slowly building up these characters with their own movies, then throwing them into a movie together. The Avengers just absolutely worked. You didn't necessarily need to have seen all the movies that led up to it to enjoy it, but it really helped um, embellish some of the backstory and you already knew some of those characters. Just balancing that team, balancing the threat, introducing Loki Loki back in as a proper villain for the Avengers, that throwback to the Kirby and Lee stuff from the first issue. I loved this movie. It blew my mind. Seriously, the highlight of phase one. It's definitely still one of the highlights of the entire MCU. At number five, I'm going Spider-Man Homecoming. 
Y'all, this is one of my favorite Spider-Man movies. Like, I'm really trying to think. What do I like better, the first Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi Spider-Man or Homecoming? Homecoming doesn't quite capture that Ditko Lee magic that that first Raimi one does, but Homecoming totally does a great job of kind of bringing the idea of the early issues of Bendis and Bagley's Ultimate Spider-Man into the MCU. Peter Parker felt younger, felt like he belonged in high school, he wasn't mischaracterized to me in any kind of way, utilization of the technology, his fanboying over Tony Stark, this is all straight from the pages of Ultimate Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Marvel team-up, and I adored it. And you would never have convinced me that they would ever on screen make the Vulture a truly threatening and menacing villain. And yo, that's what Michael Keaton did, yo. I absolutely love Vulture in this movie. Michael Keaton kills it. The special effects are great. It's humorous. It's fun in tone. And what the MCU has come to be known for, kind of being light, action-packed, humorous, and kind of fun and boisterous, that's exactly what Spider-Man should be. And for one of the first times, I felt a movie felt modern, a little hip, and at the same time classic and, and really full-on Spider-Man. At number four, I'm going Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, when this movie first was about to come out, I really didn't think it was going to do very well. I was like, nobody knows the Guardians of the Galaxy. These are characters nobody knows. I don't know if this is going to work. That being said, not a lot of the general public knew who Tony Stark was, or even just Iron Man. And now they don't just know who Iron Man is, they know Tony Stark. And they miss him on screen, right? So that's fantastic. But what James Gunn was supposed was able to do with this film was fantastic. And I should have never doubted James Gunn. He was responsible for one of my favorite cheesy slashery not slashery, but creature horror film, Slither. Such an amazing, fun movie. But yo, this movie's great. I thought it was going to ape too much on Star Wars and Firefly slash Serenity. And it does it a little bit, but it definitely does its own thing. And now other films are trying to ape on what Gar uh, Gun and company did in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It's fun. It's epic. It's got some great visuals. This movie is awesome. For number three, I'm going Captain America Winter Soldier. A lot of people really like this movie. I wasn't that big on it at first. I thought it was all right, but I just didn't really like the whole Hydra Shield thing. It comes from the Jonathan Hickman uh, Secret Warriors type book, but I just thought that that was a bit soon. I, I like I like Shield. I like having this uh, this uh, this infrastructure for the Avengers and the MCU heroes to kind of work around. But having it be destroyed by Hydra, I don't know. But over time, I really started appreciating this film even more and more, and started to see why people liked it as as much as they did. It's like a great spy thriller that almost at times feels out of place in the MCU because it's perfectly paced. It's got a great first, third, and second act. I said that out of order, but it, it doesn't matter. These movies get released out of chronological order. But that being said, Winter Soldier was a great follow-up to the first Captain America movie. It's one of those rare instances of the second part being better than the first part. I thought that was absolutely astounding. Chris Evans feeling more comfortable with that role. And Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, so awesome. Such a great interpretation of what Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting were doing in their Captain America run. With a little bit of that MCU flair, this movie is awesome, dramatic, high stakes, and it's great. I said that. For number two, I'm going Avengers Infinity War. This movie is huge. Now, granted, it does need like 10 years of prior movies to kind of really truly appreciate it, but just seeing this work on screen blew me away in an expertly paced movie. It was rather longer. It's obviously going to leave on a cliffhanger, and what a cliffhanger to leave on. We are still cleaning up the dust from that cliffhanger, the snappy cliffhanger from the end of that movie. We're still doing that today in the pages or on the screens of the MCU. Avengers Infinity War, Thanos, the slow buildup, and I was talking about the villains in these movies, and, and I think that the, the really good ones are few and far between, but like Thanos, like that's one of the best, most fully realized Marvel villains on cinema ever. Amazing. It was like a new generation's version of Darth Vader. Like, I really feel like Thanos hit with that kind of an impact, right? Now people know who Thanos is. They know about the gauntlet. What a big, epic, boisterous story. It did a great job of taking all these different pieces. You know, like the Avengers are shattered, right? It picked up from that, starts bringing it back together and crushes it even further. This movie was big. It feels like a generation's Empire Strikes Back. I keep going with the Star Wars metaphors, but that's how timeless and classic I think this movie's gonna be in the long run. And for number one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. 
I know that this is not going to be at the top of most people's list, but y'all, out of all the movies I've seen, this is the one I have the most emotional connection with. Like, I liked the first Guardians. Obviously, it was number four on this list. But when I watched the second part, it blew me away, and it never ceases to amaze me. I love the story it's telling about fathers, um, about parents, actually, you know, I guess, and 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 who, like the difference between blood and 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 like soul. I don't know. I don't even. It's like I really like the story in Guardians of the Galaxy Part Two. I feel like everything that worked about the first one worked even better in the second one. Knowing these people, we got to go deeper into like more of like. I'm not really necessarily dramatic, but like a little bit more emotional territory, and it works. I really like the movie. It's one of the most visually stunning I've ever seen. To me, it's got the best soundtrack of like any superhero adventure type movie I've ever seen. Not talking necessarily about scores. I'm talking about the music picked by James Gunn. Fantastic. I love this movie so much that people who have been following this channel for a while remember the time right after this movie came out. Watch those videos. I'm rocking the Star-Lord, like, 70s sideburns, and the, like, I'm rocking it because I was just that obsessed with it. I loved this movie. I continue to love it. Visually, a treat. Yondu, the story there with Ego and Star-Lord and Yondu and, and the, the two fathers and what actually, <sighs> it gets me. I really like this movie. I got a strong connection to it. So for me, it's my favorite, and so it's my number one. So that's my top 10 MCU films. What are yours? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm interested to see it because I know that we're all going to have some similarities and a lot of differences, and that's always fun to kind of to dissect and talk about and have fun with, right? Also, I got to tag two people to do a, a follow-up video to this, their own top 10 MCU movies. I'm going to tag uh, Manny from Tomorrow Cinema, and I'm going to tag Verno from The Cerebros. So check out those channels. They should be dropping those videos soon. Hopefully, hopefully, don't leave me out here hanging. Don't leave me hanging, man. Anyway, thank you for checking out the video. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join us over at patreon.com slash pcp if you want to help support the channel. Get a few little extra perks, just a couple little things. Nothing super big, but check it out yourself. Anyway, thank you so much for everything. We really do appreciate it. I've been rocking Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on MCUing. Station.